Hey guys, so welcome to our kitchen. This is a whacked out video for us to be making, but I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless. And what we're going to be making today is poutine, which you guys have probably heard about it. You maybe tried it before in your life, who knows, but this video is just kind of showing you that anyone with a grocery store near them can make this delicious Canadian food. <clears throat> You don't just have to come to Canada and like be like, oh, I think I can't wait to, to visit to Canada poutine. to try our, their poutine. You don't have to. So we're just going to show you here with our handy dandy cooking supplies here. Uh, just, how, yeah, just how simple it is to make. So we only really had to buy three things to make this. We already had the olive oil, which you can use butter, olive oil, any, you know, avocado oil, coconut oil. Use whatever you want, as long as you have some kind of an oil. We bought six potatoes, regular large russet potatoes. We're going to use mozzarella cheese, because, you know, that's just one of our favorite types of cheese. You can use cheese curds, is a really popular thing to do here. We're going to use mozza, because it's really melty. And gravy. We got a few different types, we're just going to mix them together. So that's the only three things we needed to buy. So we've washed our potatoes and our oven is on and preheating to 420 degrees. And we're just gonna chop some fries. So hopefully I don't slice my finger open. Like <laughs> I did that one time. It would make for a really good video if you did. All right, so now a tip that I found on the internet to helping these potatoes not stick to your pan. Obviously, the olive oil or any oil of your choice is going to help with that a lot. However, I did find a little link online that said using white granulated sugar, which I know is pretty much the devil in cooking, but if you do sprinkle a couple pinches on your freshly cut potatoes. It's going to help pull the starches out. Actually see all the liquid pouring out of it after you do it. Yeah, if you let it sit for about five minutes with the sugar on it, it'll collect a lot, like a lot of liquid at the bottom that wasn't necessarily in it to begin with, which then you just rinse away and have some potatoes with no sugar and no extra starchiness to stick it to your pan. So we're just gonna let it sit for about five minutes and then give them a rinse. So now that you have your potatoes cleaned and in the strainer you need to dry them you don't want them going in there soaking wet so you're just going to dump them on one or two rips of paper towel set them right next to your preheating oven so we have our glass pan here actually we have several. We'll get to that later. We're just going to oil the bottom of our pan. Just take a nice brush and make sure you get a nice thick coat all along the bottom. We like to use olive oil because it's a really healthy fat. So we've oiled our pan. We've set our fries up to dry for about five minutes or so. So now we're just going to take our fries and spread them evenly across the bottom of our pan. The reason we have several pans instead of just one is because you only want them one layer thick. Every fry has to be kind of evenly distributed along the bottom of the pan.
Now we have them all evenly distributed. I'm just gonna take the oil and generously spread it across the top of them. You have them nice and oiled, covered in oil all across the top. You can season them however you want, whatever you like on your fries. So we'll just use a couple random clubhouse ones. This one's like a peppery bourbon one. And you can use literally whatever you want. Anything that you like. A bit of garlic, salt and pepper. I set the oven for 420, and we're going to put them in for about 20 minutes. Oh, let's see them up here. Oh, don't burn yourself, sweetie. Don't burn yourself. She wants some of that fry action. Yum. Oh, careful, baby. Hot. You can hear them screaming like mandrake roots, which means that they're probably ready to be flipped. Yummy. I'm just gonna be grating the cheese for the poutine as the fries cook, just so I'm all ready for when they come out of the oven. We're gonna be using this mozzarella today. However, if you're vegan, you could use your vegan replacement cheese if you'd like. Um, this is just what we're going with tonight. So that gravy is pretty straightforward. There's always some instructions on the back. It's basically adding two cups of water into this pot on medium heat. Ta-da! That's one. We'll get another one in a second. If you want to use any other method of gravy, you don't have to use the packets. You could use the stuff in the cans. You could make your own. Whatever you want to do. This is just honestly con for convenience matter is why we're doing the packets. And let it get hot. Pretty good and cooked now. As you can see, the edges are browning and they are decreasing in size. Now, what you can do is take some paper towel or a rag of some sort. You could let them sit on it for a minute or two just to get some of the excess oils out if you prefer, because there is quite a lot of fat already in this dish. <laughs> Certainly not a healthy one, not even remotely, but it is a very fun and indulgent snack for here us or here in Canada. We're gonna layer the cheese throughout it. Got our steaming hot gravy all set, ready for the protein. Here we are. So how can you tell me that that looks gross? Oh yeah, cheesy, gravy, beefy, tasting, <laughs> and a whole lot of french fries. So, 
there you have it. That is how to create such a simple dish that we enjoy here in Canada. Love it, love it, love it. String of cheese. I'm so ready for this. So, so ready for this. I'm extremely excited. I'm glad we went with the real potatoes. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, guys. <laughs> I highly suggest you guys try this out. If you can find a way to make it appropriate for your diet, with like a, well, we even use a gluten-free gravy base. You can use vegan cheese. You can, you can pretty much do anything you need to do to make this okay for your diet. Obviously not the healthiest thing in the world, and we don't eat it all the time. And That's if you do eat meat, add whatever you want to it, and it's still good. You can add pulled pork, uh, ground beef is good. Everything is pretty much good on it. You can make nacho cookies. You can change a hundred different ways. The world is your oyster. You can put oysters on it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easy as that, guys, and I tr like just trust me. It's pretty damn good. Another signature dish for enough. Want to wait? <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for watching this totally random video. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much. Take care. Also that <laughs> <laughs>